one question I get asked sometimes is, when I give charity, how do I give charity for the sake of Allah? Meaning, you know, what if I'm just being a good person? What if it's just me doing something out of the goodness of my heart? Is that not for the sake of Allah? What does it exactly mean? And many people don't really know how to answer that question. It's a very, very profound question. If we do things out of our values of empathy and selflessness, is that not rewardable in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is it only rewardable if before I give charity, I say to myself or I say to the other person that this is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And subhanAllah, we find that everything is contained within this powerful verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that those people, when they give, they feed out of their love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who is poor, the one who is an orphan, and the one who is a prisoner. And as they feed them, we only feed you for the sake of Allah, not desiring any sort of gratitude and not desiring any sort of compensation, not now or in the future. This one ayah, or even the first fragment of the ayah, answers three essential questions of charity. Why you give charity, how you give charity, and who you give that charity to. Within just a few words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encapsulates all of these powerful meanings that truly, if we pay attention to, would completely reinvent the manner in which we serve, even if we are already in the service of mankind. And I want to start off with that question. They feed in accordance with their hub, their love for him or their love for it. The word hubbihi is actually disputed. Is it, do they give out of their love of Allah or do they give in spite of their love of what they're giving? Meaning what the pronoun, the damir here, is it referring to Allah hubbihi, that they spend out of their love of Allah or they spend despite loving the food that they're giving away? And that's a very legitimate difference of opinion and it's a powerful one. It's a profound one because both of them and we often find that within the Qur'an you'll have one word that serves two meanings and those meanings do not conflict with one another, rather they embellish one another. And this is one of those situations. They spend out of their love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The scholars that say that it means they spend out of their love of Allah, that they feed people for their love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they say that this means that when they give, they give with their love of Allah. They accompany that giving, that service with their love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they beautify their service, they beautify their charity because they know that it's for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other scholars, and I'll get back to that definition, that say that they spend despite loving what they're giving. الطعام, specifically food, they feed others specifically what they love, what they desire. They give that away. It addresses one of the most, uh, one of the deepest crises we have in how we understand charity and philanthropy in our generation. And that is that most people give charity not because they love that charity or the, they love the person they're giving charity to, but because they no longer have any use with what they are disposing of. And they want to find something that's semi-noble and it's also convenient to get rid of things that they no longer love. Charity in our day and age is not because we care deeply, or for the most part, of course, there are people, alhamdulillah, there's always good in this world, but it's not necessarily because people care deeply about solving the problem of economic inequality or solving the disparity that we have. That's always existed, quite frankly, throughout mankind. Even before Bernie Sanders, by the way, economic inequality has been an issue and has been spoken about. In fact, throughout world history, usually you have people that are extremely rich and elite and extremely poor and downtrodden. There's very rarely a middle class in most societies in history. Usually you're either overwhelmed with poverty or you're overwhelmed with ease. So when people spend, do they give what they love to who they love? Or do they give what they no longer have a need for to people that they're really not interested in knowing or serving? That's the question that needs to be addressed here. 
And the Prophet وسلم, he addressed this with his word and with his deed. In word, the Prophet وسلم, was asked, Ayyu sadaqati afdal, what is the best form of charity to give? He says, Anta sadaq wa anta sahihun, shahihun, ta'mulu al-aish wa takhsha al-faqr. He gave four things sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's an authentic hadith in Sunan al-Nasa'i by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. He said the best type of charity is when you give charity wa anta sahih while you're healthy. Meaning what? When people die, suddenly they try to will off all of their stuff, all of their inheritance to charity. It doesn't work that way. You should be giving it while you're healthy because now you're just robbing your children of that wealth. It's not fair. Wait, you know, wh wh while you yourself are healthy and able to benefit from that money, and you yourself are not in need physically, you're in a position to earn. وَأَنْتَ صَحِيحٌ شَحِيحٌ The Prophet ﷺ said, when you feel stingy, when you're healthy and you're well off and you feel a sense of stinginess, when you're called to give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only that, تَأْمَلُ الْعِيشِ You still feel like you have a long life ahead of you, so you still hope for a long life. So it's not something that you're doing because you're at the end of your life and you've already lived your worldly goals and what you view to be your purpose. This is your purpose. Service to mankind is your purpose. You've still got your life ahead of you. You still have hopes and dreams and career goals and so on and so forth. And you still give. And you're a human being. You fear poverty. When these four things are combined within a person as they give charity, It shows that you're giving charity with a sense of purpose. You're preferring others to yourself. Ala hubbihi, despite your personal love for that food. And this is something confirmed throughout the Quran and throughout the Sunnah of the Prophet. ﷺ. In the Quran, You will not achieve righteousness or its reward until you give from what you love. وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصًا And they prefer others to themselves even when they themselves are in need of what they're giving. This concept of serving and giving your free time, giving your wealth and not just your disposable wealth and not just the food that you don't really like and not just the clothes that you don't really like to wear anymore. And subhanAllah, that's a culture that's inherited. We teach our kids that. You're no longer wearing these clothes, that's fine. Let's throw them into a box and give them to the Salvation Army or go drop them off in front of a masjid and hope they'll send them to Syria. They don't need your garbage. They really don't need your garbage. They don't need your leftovers. Where is the ihsan in what you give? Where is the spirit of the Messenger وسلم, when Aisha gave away the entire part of the lamb and left the shoulder? Because she knew the Prophet ﷺ loved it. He desired it. And for that reason, when the Prophet ﷺ came home, he said, we have given away the shoulder and kept everything else. My beloved brothers and sisters, when you do something with the intention of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only, then it is for the sake of Allah. So do as many good deeds as possible and make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy. And whenever you do something, don't do it for pleasing others for pleasing people do it for the sake of Allah do it for pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you are giving charity then give for the sake of Allah you are helping someone then do it for the sake of Allah and we'll see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept your good deeds and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you more opportunities of good deeds Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will shower mercy in, in your life Allah will give barakah in your life Allah will make you more efficient and productive and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open the doors of opportunities for you. When you do something for the sake of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you back in many folds. Allah will multiply your good deeds and give you back in return in many folds. So always do for the sake of Allah. Always help others and feed others and respect others and honor others all for the sake of Allah then you will be given the ultimate reward by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala many a times we go to the masjid we pray and we uh, give sadaqa and we help others and we try to show it off by putting it on the social media and we want people to know that we are pious and generous no never do that do it with the intention 
of making Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy and you never know which action of yours will be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and will be a means for you to enter Jannah. So continuously do good deeds, make it a daily habit to find good deeds and do them. May Allah accept our good deeds. Help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org. Link in the description.